Hello everyone, this is Ronnie and just a quick kind of follow-up video to the last video about dry fasting and also connected with Robert Lockhart and what I'm seeing is some people are using this as a way of saying and people have replied to my video and they're saying uh, this is the result of him being a fruitarian that he died of malnutrition and things like that and uh, I kind of suspected that people would do that um, I think Danny Glass made a video like that and it's just it's funny to me because they say they say stuff like that's what happens when you're a fruitarian for 40 years <laughs> like, like so are you saying that you can do the diet for 40 years and, and there's basically no problems um, these people are kind of delusional and I get that a lot of you want to find information that tells you that eating meat is good Let's let's talk about people that eat meat for 40 years, 50 years. Virtually everyone in the Western world on the standard diet, which is full of meat, basically a meat-based diet, are on medication in their later years. And you might say, oh, my grandfather reached 100 or 90 and they eat meat and everything and all that. Yeah, they eat meat. And they stay alive because they've got blood pressure medication, because they've got um, medication that opens up their arteries, which have all been blocked because they've got digestion medication, because they've got medication to deal with the symptoms of the other medication. Um, so many people are on medication to extend their life. Also, they've been in hospital and they've been kept alive by therapy, by surgery, by medical treatment, by being put on fluids and, and, and stuff like that. That's what's extending the length of people's life whether you call that a healthy life, I'm not sure. Um, my grandfather is older than Robert Lockhart, and he eats um, what Robert Lockhart was. And he eats meat probably every day, maybe maybe not every day, but he definitely does eat meat um, and dairy and unhealthy things like that. So I'm aware that you can live longer, or you can people can live long, and people can smoke and live a long life. Um, that's not how you put the odds in your favour. Uh, we know that smoking decreases life, so it's not something worth doing. We know an unhealthy diet can decrease your lifespan and bring on disease. But you know, my grandfather has to go to the hospital every week. Um, he's got, uh, I'm not sure he has to get injections. He is struggling to walk now. He's in a lot of pain in his joints and all, all sorts of things. Um, other uncles of mine, they've had heart attacks, they're still alive, but they've had heart attacks, they've had strokes, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, they're still alive. So you can crow about that and celebrate all the healthy meat eaters that are still alive into their 90s and 80s and all that. But if you've got diabetes, if you had a stroke, if you had a heart attack, and you're on medication to keep you going, it's not a great testament to your meat diet. It's not a great testament to the power of eating meat. So eating meat is a sure way of creating degenerative disease, chronic disease over a lifetime. Contrast that with Robert Lockhart. No sign of degenerative disease or chronic disease. Wasn't taking any medication. Didn't have any issues in any of his joints and was climbing and, uh, and walking. Posture was fine. Everything. <clears throat> and the doctors have already confirmed it looks like he's done some damage with the dry fasting. Now, I'm not judging Robert for that. It's not something that I liked. But I was kind of like, okay, I don't know a lot about it. I never spoke to him about it, really. I never... I've told other people not to do it, you know, and, and stuff like that. But I never really spoke to him. He was doing his own experiment at the end of the day. I didn't know how far he would take it. And, and the doctors have said that it looks like these, that his kidney function... Um, was indicative of damage through dehydration, through dry fasting. That's what it seems to suggest. That's what the doctors are saying. Let's respect them. So the idea that it's his fruitarian diet, well, we don't see any evidence for that. But what we do see is his fruitarian diet meant he had no chronic disease. He didn't have heart, he didn't die of a heart, well, he died of a heart attack in relation to dehydration, his kidneys failing.
but he didn't have the classic heart attack symptoms, he didn't have a stroke, he didn't have diabetes, he didn't have cancer, he didn't have any of these things. Digestive conditions, arthritis, and on and on and on. All the major chronic diseases that we can avoid through avoiding eating meat and a meat-based diet and stuff like that. Um, what has happened in our raw food community and something that I've really tried to really try to, to stop happening and at the fruit festival one of the things I say at the fruit festival as well at the start as I say we are not here to tell you not to go to the doctor not to use medication that is not the message of the festival um, it's not an intelligent thing to do it's not an intelligent sorry yeah it's not an intelligent thing to do um, there is a time and a place for these things and it's all, all we're really saying is for chronic disease and a lot of these conditions that happen because of your diet that are the most are, are the problems that most people have are the reason that the hospitals are full are the reason that that healthcare is billions and billions and billions and dollars trillions of dollars or whatever it is spending is because of chronic disease mostly mostly chronic disease cancer heart disease diabetes stroke arthritis on and on and on these are conditions of chronic disease connected to lifestyle choices, the number one being your diet. The problem with the diet mostly being saturated fat. Saturated fat coming from animal products. That's how we break it down. Okay, so if you're a smart person, if you can think, let me, let me, let me walk you through this. If the biggest risk to you having a life of pain, disease, disability, premature death, if the biggest cause of that is going to be related to your diet is chronic diseases and chronic diseases are caused by lifestyle choices and lifestyle choices the most most important one is your diet and within diet the biggest thing that's connected to these diseases is saturated fat and animal protein and the sources of animal protein and saturated fat are meat and dairy products and you can live healthfully without those doesn't it make sense to give them up? Like, why are you guys trying to keep, keep this charade going? You know that meat is the reason and, and animal products are the reason that if you go out there in the street and speak to any 60 year old, 70 year old, they're taking medication, they're in the doctors in and out, they probably had, some of them have had a heart attack already, a bunch of them are on blood pressure medication at the very least, um, the most healthy are on blood pressure medication, um, a lot have had a heart attack already, a lot have had a stroke, and most have been kept alive artificially through medication and through medical intervention. So, you guys that are, that are trying to say that, oh, he, the problem was he didn't eat meat. What, what was in the meat? I'm not sure what you're... <laughs> what is it that was in the meat? Tell us what was in the meat. Because look, that's meat. That's meat. I've got my meat right here. See if I need to source any nutrients from meat. Look, there it is. There it is. My body can source it. My body wants meat. There it is, right there. All over. I'm made of meat. And that meat was created by my body. It's my own protein. Specific to me. Created from amino acids, from fruits, vegetables, the healthiest foods for human beings. Just like a cow makes all of its protein from grass, a horse makes all of its protein from grass, and every other animal makes its protein from its own species-specific diet, from eating other living stuff, whether it's plants or animals or whatever, and using the, pro the uh, building blocks of life to create life for itself. It's really simple. So, uh, Lockhart's death, to me, I'm, I'm really sad that he became a cautionary tale. I don't like the fact that in 20, 30 years to come, I'm probably still going to be talking to people when they ask about dry fasting. And I'm like, well, listen, here's the story. Here's the guy who knew more about dry fasting than anyone else. Here's the guy who had done more experiments on his body than anyone else, who'd been fruitarian longer than anyone else, that had the best fruit, that had access to the best fruit, the best environment, had a cool life, had people around him, had family, and all, like, had everything going for him, right? and was healthy, no signs of degenerative disease, chronic disease. And dry fasting um, took him down. I will say though, 
the dry fast I I think it's the connect it's the combination of the fact that you picked up an infection and then try to deal with it with a dry fast. That is the fatal combination to me. I think if he didn't have an infection, he would have survived the dry fast. The problem is having an infection that is already taxing your body. For all you people out there that are fruitarian, raw, vegan, natural hygiene, when you get an infection, infectious disease. Okay. Um, so yeah, just to say, infection, like, let, let me, I, a lot of you don't know the history of medicine. Years ago, if you cut your arm, let's say you were in an accident, you broke your leg and it, and it split open and your bone was showing, you were going to die years ago. Simple. You were dead because of infection. Because infection would set in and it would kill you. We didn't have any way to deal with it. It didn't matter if you went on a fast or a dry fast or a raw food diet infection would kill you. It doesn't matter if you're the healthiest you can possibly be, the infection will kill you because you're not meant to have a massive open wound like that becoming infected. Um, the same thing with infectious disease like mal malaria and things like that. Um, someone commented there was a guy who had malaria and I believe that he died of dehydration. It sounds like it was dry fat. he was trying to dry fast away the malaria. What unfortunately he didn't know was Fasting is not for an infection. It's not, especially dry fasting, um, because you become dehydrated when you get infected. Your body is trying to fight this this terrible infection. And people used to die of infection all the time. It's medicine, the medical, the Western medical scientific model that has allowed us to survive infection. All you natural hygiene people, 100% natural hygiene, never go to a doctor, I'm never going to a doctor ever, whatever. Get over it. Get over it. You're not going to, you're not going to natural hygiene away and in like an, a serious infection like that. So, uh, we have things called antibiotics. They work. Stop with this anti, you know, medicine all the time. Now, if you've got, a digestive condition caused by food, then there's no point in taking the medication. You're right about that. You should change your diet. If you have um, symptoms of heart disease, yes, change your diet. If you have uh, symptoms of arthritis, change your diet. We get it, and that's most of what people have. But when you have an infection, when you have an infectious disease, when you have a bacteria issue, that's when you go to the doctors, right? That's one of the things you go to the doctors for, as far as I'm concerned. You don't chance these things. So Robert was kind of anti going to the doctors, and I understand that. He had a history going back years of having issues, and you know he made the huge changes of changing his diet, and, he, and, and for many people, that makes them turn against medicine. And they see so many people with so many problems that the doctors can't help with, but they're still giving, filling people for, for their drugs. And we see that, and it's terrible. And then you get someone to change the diet, and it, all the problems disappear. And when we see that, we think, we lose complete trust in the medical movement. But we can't lose complete trust. We have to be intelligent. We have to understand what they can help with. Obviously, trauma any kind of physical injury, trauma, accident, damage, fall, you know, breaking a bone, cuts, whatever. That's what they can deal with. Um, infection, infectious disease. A lot of the people that went away from the fruitarian diet recently, bacteria issues in the gut, potentially caused by water fasting. That's, this is some of the ideas people are sharing. I don't know if it's 100% right, but... Um, and some of them are drinking urine and who knows what else. Uh, so, yeah, um, Robert Lockhart didn't pass away of um, malnutrition. Um, and because he didn't have any signs of malnutrition. I, I, I mean, someone was saying, oh, he uh, potentially had a insufficient amount of a particular nutrient and that would stop him from being able to deal with it oh no shut up man it's the dry fast and the and the infection it wasn't nutrition 
there wasn't an insufficient amount of a nutrient that stopped the body from being able to fight the no it's not what the doctors are saying they're telling us they're telling us what it was so it's terrible that Robert has become a as I said a cautionary tale I mean it's so sad to me like there was so many like I couldn't really believe that Woodstock let them talk about dry fasting like I really couldn't believe that the organizers were continuing to allow people to talk about things like that and a couple of years ago maybe last year there was someone at the festival talking about like alternative cures to cancer and I'm like why are we letting people speak about this nonsense nonsense you know taking an overdose of vitamin C is not going to get rid of your cancer like I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> no. Um, so I, I just, uh, we need to stick to what we can help people with: chronic disease caused by diet. Remove the cause. That's what hygiene is about: the cause. When the cause is not the diet, then changing the diet will only help in increasing the person's level of health. It does not get rid of the cause. If the person has an infection, the cause of the problem is the infection, is the, the, vac the bacteria, the virus. And all these people, oh, the germ theory doesn't exist. Wrong. That's wrong. Like, yeah, the germ theory is not why people get a heart attack. Germs are not why people get diabetes. But they are why people get infections, infectious diseases, viruses, all these things. Yes, if you're a fruitarian, you get a, you've got a better chance of fighting off these things because you've got a higher level of health. Yes, but if you can take antibiotics that within a day specifically destroy those things, then then do it. Don't do a fast for thirty days trying to get trying to do it. And I I don't know. I don't know why people get so caught up with that. Anyway, um, so yeah, I hope hope to some degree that helps clear things up a little bit um, but the whole scenario has made me get very more cautious now I'm thinking more cautious now I'm thinking about because I don't drink a lot of water to be honest but I don't drive fast but I don't drink a lot of water so it's making me think maybe I should be drinking more water maybe I should be um, blood tests and things and be more careful about these things and, and get a bit more reality I don't do any supplementation or anything like that, so maybe I should be looking into that more. So I, I don't want anyone else to be another cautionary tale, an example of like, here's what not to do or whatever, you know. So um, thanks for watching. I hope that this is respectful for everyone involved. Um, and... Uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Please feel free to share it or like it or what have you. Comment below. Thank you very much.